So I'm from Canada originally, and I moved here in 2007 as a very young person then. And I started on my path in the development sector. Through uh, lots of twists and turns, I met the founders of Atma, and I joined with them. But being from Canada, I didn't necessarily have the best people around me all the time helping to guide me. I didn't know what right kind of advice I should be taking. And while we've been able to reach out to many organizations, I've been able to create uh, an online platform that serves over 400 organizations across the country. We have regular monthly webinars. Lots of the entrepreneurs we work with are here in the room today. Um, but at the same time, I always question myself. I questioned my own confidence. I questioned whether I was doing a great job and whether I was actually being able to create the impact that I set out to do. And I was letting the wrong people set guideposts for me along that journey. That all had a huge impact on the way I felt about myself. Um, it all made me question my abilities and made me question myself. And I ended up in a really, really difficult space. Um, I was quite depressed. I was having regular panic attacks. And I know from that time of when I lost my way how draining it was and how burnt out I was and how I wasn't able to make the right decisions for my organization or the impact that we were trying to create. I'm not perfect, though. So for example, last year, our chief programs officer went on maternity leave, and for that six months, I thought it would be a great idea that I do her job and my job at the same time. Um, that definitely <laughs> ended up in a lot of burnout. The work was huge, I was traveling all the time, and keeping track of all of what I was trying, uh, all of what needed to be done was really difficult. There was a few emergency calls to my therapist. There was um, a lot of time spent on the Headspace app, and I was able, but eventually I was able to move beyond the exhaustion. And the major difference this time was that I knew I was doing everything possible to move myself into a new space. Um, as I said, at Atma, we've made well-being a centerpiece of the conversation that we have as a team. Um, our ability to talk about well-being and what people are going through openly um, has made a world of difference. Um, and me sharing my own story, and I hope that's a little bit of what happens today, has been able um, to open the doors for other people to do the same thing and has allowed all of us to be more successful in our work. Um, knowing from my experience and the beating that my self-esteem has taken in the past, I know that well-being is an essential skill for any social entrepreneur and to cultivate and to bring to the work that they do. For me, burnout comes from fear, fear of competition and comparison to others, and overworking myself to reach those goals. For others, it comes from anger at the external world for not acknowledging the impact that they have created and the work that they're doing, and then overworking themselves to get those resources that they need. Um, working in social enterprise, being uh, a leader in, in the social impact space is difficult. You're always gonna be working against impossible like levels of work that need to get done. Um, the workload is intense, and I wouldn't ever kid anybody that is not. Um, the pressure of creating and sustaining a program in a community that you're most likely not from is also enormous. There's a constant search for resources. Funding and fundraising is a <coughs> continuous process, and nobody would be telling you the truth if they've fully cracked it. And there's a lot of family pressure that people face to get a real job. Uh, so there's a lot of things out there um, that are gonna create stress for social entrepreneurs. Um, recently I met some leaders who were incredibly burnt out. They had come to me to ask for strategic advice on how to pivot their model. I heard them out and everything that I said was met with, we've tried that, or no, we don't wanna do that, or that will never work. There was no strategic genius that I could offer that they would be willing to accept because everything was just being met with that wall of burnout. And it 
they basically become allergic to work that they used to love. Many people believe that if you're an entrepreneur, you can't have a social life. People believe that if you're an entrepreneur, you have to devote every waking moment to your work and to the cause. And if you're an entrepreneur, that you should be able to weather extreme burnout on your own. All of these things are exceedingly false. Being burnt out, like I was, is not just terrible for you, but it's also, and most of all, terrible for your organization. You'll constantly feel like you're drowning, and it makes it exceedingly difficult to see with any clarity where change is required, and it makes it difficult for you to allow the right people to support you. As one of my entrepreneurs recently told me, that isn't burnout just par for the course. And I really believe that it is not, and I hope that we'll be able to change the conversation around that. Cultivating well-being is essential to creating social change. Social enterprise is about creating impact, not about doing TED Talks. And in order to create social impact, you need to be able to listen closely to the people that you are serving, which means being able to put your ego aside. So we're here today to talk about careers and social impact. Careers are built over many years, and you can't sustain uh, burnout over many, many years. So I don't have a TED Talk, but I do have a career in creating social impact, and I've worked with dozens and dozens of NGOs across the country and helped them move forward in their journey. I've been able to do this and to keep myself doing it because I, as an individual and through my organization, have cultivated well-being practices that have given us the momentum to move forward. 